All right, we got a Stanley Cup to win. We got a Stanley Cup to win. Look at those ratings on the right. It's our year, damn it. It's not, but I'm going to say that it is. For the 18th time, let's turn on... Actually, you know what? I'm going to turn off the whole AI sending me trade request things because I pretty much feel like there's no trades we would want to make right now. So we'll just go ahead and turn off that particular alert and just sim. We were pretty damn methodical with setting up this roster. So if anything's going to happen, we'll do it in our own time. Right now, it's all about getting to the playoffs, maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Potentially. Not going to happen, but hey. We're going to be fine. 0-3-0 oh, oh, to start the year. Well, chat, give me something to talk about, because this is, uh, oh boy, this is going to be a long season. This is going to be a very long season. We should be stepping up and stepping, you know, forward at this point, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Three, five, and three to start the year. Not good. Uh, JD, yeah, should be a good show. Should be. I'm still, like, from a wrestling perspective, obviously it's like there's still not too much excitement about the uh, prospect of a pay-per-view every month that's not a part of a streaming service just because we're kind of past that point. But uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I don't watch much of the NBA. What's the point of the in-season tournament? Money. Money is the point. Um, It's maybe the, like, <sighs> call me a boomer. It's maybe the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's like, ah, yes. Yeah, this is how we're going to make regular season games mean more. It's like, yeah, that's that's how you're going to do it, huh? Um, I, I have yet to see a good justification from anybody defending the NBA in-season tournament. It's just, it just seems like it was designed solely to get more online engagement by being like, hey, look at how fucking weird the court designs are now. Isn't that wacky? So it just it, it feels like something specifically designed to get people to be like, well, this is fucking shit. And then Adam Silver goes, but you have heard of me. I mean, no, it's a great tournament. So. You know. It's uh, it's good, though. It's good. <laughs> Uh, Griffin Reinhardt fractures his jaw. That's not good. That's not good at all. He's back already. a boy. Put on that fishbowl and get back out there. We need you. You're an OFD now. How many points do you have? Four. Sir, it's January. How do you have four points? Maybe he is a bust after all. Four? Four points, man. God, we're not going to make the playoffs, are we? We're already in February. We're at 20, 20, and 8. We have got off to a very good start, though, for February. Marion Gabarik is on waivers. He's not quite what he used to be, but he's still getting paid like he was what he used to be. If I needed another cap whale, I'd claim him because it's Marion Gabrick and he's amazing. But we'll hold off. Oh, my God. What a run. We finally lose again. Nick McBride gets hurt again. Freaking glass bones and paper skin. Nick McBride. What the hell? Get the Hamburglar back out of there for McBride. Let's see, by the way. Kadri shockingly isn't pissed about the line that he's on. 97 overall Morgan Riley. Nielsen up to an 84. So that plan's working out well. Marner's up to an 82, as is Kachuk. They're both still listed as minor league scoring forwards, though. Veselainen's up to an 81. Zadina's already gone up by four this year. So we're definitely getting some of that good player development again. 
Matt Spencer's almost NHL ready. Not bad. Kind of hot up to a 78. Where's Austin? He was our top line center. Look at him. He just doesn't have a mustache because he was a child. But he's there. He's there. Uh, injured ribs for Andreas Janssen. That's a shame. All right, we're coming up with the trade deadline. And again, I really don't feel like we're going to have anything to do here. We're definitely not going to add to this team with the expectation that they could go on a crazy kind of run or anything like that. Let's get Janssen back in there. Fosterman up to an 81, too. Trade deadline is here. We're up to uh, third place in the division, 31, 24, and 8. Again, I still don't think this is a team that we should add to necessarily. By the way, we've simmed through a season in like six minutes, <laughs> which is delightful compared to what we were dealing with in the 360 era. How's our goaltending looking? McBride has a 932. Bergvik hasn't been an amazing backup, but McBride's looking pretty good. Defensively, uh, Andre Mazaros has more points than Griffin Reinhardt. Also, Andrew Nielsen has 50 penalty minutes. A little bit worried about our defense here. Right side, 40 points for Nylander. Gautier has more points than Timoshoff. 12 points for Bryce Girardi. Kane on 41 points. Panarin, Kapanen. That third line's been struggling. Kadri's outscoring both uh, Howden and Dubois. Even though he's on the fourth line, he definitely has power play time, though. One power play goal for Naz. Again, this just isn't the team yet, though, to say, all right, let's see who's out there. Big fish to put us over the edge because it's just not... It's not going to happen. I am worried about Evander Kane and uh, Griffin Reinhardt long-term, but... Then again, 2019, we have so many draft picks that it inverts the order, including four first-rounders. So maybe, just maybe, we do still look around really quickly. Could get Steve Downey, Mason Raymond. We actually could go for someone like Steve Downey, but again, making our team better... Will it actually make them worse? Jeff Skinner. Last year of his deal. I mean, it's tough to say no to getting Jeff Skinner, Mark Giordano. There are definitely players we could go after. Oh, the temptation is there, but again, it just doesn't feel like the right time. Palmonville is still out on the market. Looks like Giordano is still going to be the best defenseman that we can pick up to improve this team. Mark my thoughts out there if we need someone to hip check fools. Sam Gagne. Sharks got Justin Braun. Michael Rasmussen was out there. Um, I'm so torn. I'm so, so torn on what to do here. Especially, too, because the drafts have not been good. Let's look at our lineup one more time. Where would we find improvement? I don't think there's anywhere we find improvement. I think we're good. At best, it's another defenseman to put Renat Valiev on the third pair. I mean, Mazaros and Miller are fine, but we could definitely improve there. 
Also, Morgan Riley was showing up as a 98, which is insane. I don't want Steve Downey. I don't want Jeff Skinner. James Wisniewski. Top six defenseman. All right, so he's still not as good as he used to be. Calgary? I mean, what's Geo's contract? That's uh, that's a spicy meat to ball right there. That's a tough contract to deal with long term. <sighs> Shit. That's a bad time right there. Anybody can afford it, though. It is us. Say we swap them. Kevin Miller. We sacrifice our own first rounder because they're going for the playoffs. We can offset this. Not particularly well. <laughs> Shit. Okay, that first rounder is honestly a bit too much. We'll nickel and dime it with other picks. Uh, what about our own second round pick? And then just a buttload of fourths. Kevin Miller for a second and three. Kevin Miller a second and three fourths for Mark Giordano. No. I have to get rid of draft picks anyway, just in case I have too many. Now, this was the era of the game glitching the hell out. Mark Giordano, welcome to Toronto. Kevin Miller, a second and three thirds. They wouldn't have retained on a deal that has three years left after this. So, um, Honestly, we get rid of picks that aren't a first rounder. And we add Mark Giordano to this defense. Which... Uh, yeah, that is a pretty damn good addition. Especially come playoff time, we can get him onto a higher line. Was there another team that was giving up a good defenseman that we could get an upgrade on Andre Mazaros with? Jordan Osterle is not going to be that. Koivu's brother Miko. Saku's not there either. Andy Green. Top six defenseman, so he's not going to be that much better. He's about the same as Mazaros. Yes, for Fast. Bago, what's going on? Oh, that's right. Mark Mathot was out there. Let's go. Let's go. We're, we're actually adding at the deadline, Bagel. We're trying to increase our chances. Ottawa would be over the... Oh, that's right. I can't trade Mazaros. Whoops. Kind of forgot about that. What if I retain 50 on Mazaros? I mean, I'm okay with retaining 50 on him because it's up at the end of the year. There we go. I didn't even have to retain 50. 2.8. So we were... But the odds that they actually still want to take the Mazaros contract have to be slim. There we go. Now it's sorting our draft picks properly. Um, let's do the old bunch of picks. Okay. Take out the sevenths. And go with the sixths and the fifths. Yeah, they don't want to take Mazaros. That's okay, though. I can use Mazaros as a scratch. And then technically just send down Brooks or pick. You know, from ball hockey, best I've played, most confident I've been in that. I'm jealous of people who have uh, who live in. That's the only reason I'm mad. I'm don't I don't live in a city. Is I'm just like ah oh, man, you, you miss out on some things like that. You know. All right, 
right, if we just go with draft picks, the LA second is pretty close on its own. Just a bit low. Second round pick for Mark Mathod at the deadline is pretty damn good. Second and a seventh. It says we got to put down Brooks or pick, which is fine. <laughs> Makes it sound like a pet. Jesus Christ. Um, so goalie wise, that's good. Defense is one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. We can, in fact, drop Brooks, Brooks or pick. This move will result in your team being over the cap by dropping a player. Are you sure about that? By dropping a player, I'm going to be over the cap. What forward did it send down? It sent down a forward, and I don't know what forward that was. It was that grinder. And he's not showing up right now. I'm going to hit auto fix roster and hope it doesn't do anything stupid in terms of losing me players. Waiver declarations, waiver claims. Okay, as far as I can tell, we should be okay. I don't think we lost anybody. I've been wrong before, though. So don't quote me on that. Look at the goalies. We'll solve that in a minute. Defense. Four, five, six, seven. Can I send down or pick? No, I can't. Can I swap or pick for Bergvik? Okay. Uh, looks like our goaltending is going to be what it is for the rest of the way. Sutter is there. Okay, so he didn't get claimed. His overall is just lower. I'm so confused. Okay. If I go back to Sutter. I go to Bergvik. And then I go back to Orpik. Still can't do it. Okay, well, it is what it is. I mean, technically, we should be able to fix it come playoff time. Um, so we can take out Mazaros for Renat Valiev. And technically, if a forward gets hurt, it's going to be a defenseman that steps up for him. But yeah, Mark Mathot and Mark Giordano will be our third pair up until playoff time. Because we still want Nielsen, Valiev, and Reinhardt, but especially these two, to get that playing time. Kadri back down to the fourth line. Mr. Crash Andrews, you handsome devil, you. How the heck are you? Yeah, that's looking good. AHL is looking fantastic. It technically went best lines, but you know what? That's, that's okay. We can fix that should they make the playoffs. But I think we're good. Mark Mathot, Mark Giordano. With 19 games to go, we had been on a really good run. There's a chance we'll make the playoffs for the first time. And we're not that far into this. We're only in 2019. High elite, Dimitro, Trimmer Shop, and low bottom six, Mitch Marner. What a time to be alive. Mm. Man, we had three straight games go to a shootout. Damn. 36, 27, and 10. We get to April 1st, now technically April 2nd. Where are we? Third in the division. We're not guaranteed a spot because Florida's right there, but we are very much in the mix. Are the Leafs going to be playoff bound for the first time? We got Buffalo. Big win. New Jersey and Philly. That's rough. Tampa. One point in our last three games. Ottawa is a win. That's our 40th on the season. 
It could come down to the final day, or are we in? We are in! The Toronto Maple Leafs are going back to the playoffs. And we look to be locked into a matchup against Montreal in round number one. We are finally back in the playoffs in Leafland. There it is. The all-Canadian affair. Montreal and Toronto as the Leafs have made the playoffs for the first time. Under our command, three points above the Sabres to get this non-wildcard position. That's not bad. We said this could be the first time we step up. St. Louis Blues were the best team in the league on 112 points in 2019. As we take a look here at the players, it was Austin Matthews leading the way. No penalties for Matthews. He's not the only one either. 54 points for Matthews. You had Kane and Panarin all at least hitting 50. Nylander was on 49. Kadri on 41, which is so impressive. Again, he was on the fourth line with power play time. And then Howden, Timishoff, Gautier, Kapanen all over 30. Dubois on 25. It's a little bit disappointing for him, but scoring by committee. 31 goals for Vander Kane. Defensively, Morgan Riley and his band of merry men. Reinhardt finished with 16 points, as did Geo. 10 points and a plus six for Andrew Nielsen. Mark Mathod had a brutal season, but hopefully he'll step it up for us in the playoffs. In goal. In goal. AJ, you never know who you're going to find in a director, yeah? You never know. A 924 for Nick McBride. The youngster will be our goaltender. Andrew Hammond's there as the backup. Frederick Bergvik will not be given the chance as the backup. He didn't earn it. Hamburglar did. Around the league, 95 points for Tyler Sagan. 86 for Jamie Benton. And then you have Ovi, Voracek, and John Tavares rounding out the top five and scoring. 54 goals for Sagan as well. Led the league. Then you had Ovi, Tarasenko, Tavares, Taylor Hall, technically Patrick Kane, and 94 overall, Jonathan Drouin. Tremendous. Catch or take it easy, buddy. Jonathan Drouin, man. 36 goals. Defensively, 56 points for OEL, 54 for D'Angelo, then Morgan Riley, John Klingberg, and Duncan Keith finishing the top five. For goalies, top save percentage among starters goes to Corey Schneider, who is hurt. Martin Jones is up there, Ben Bishop. Fair enough. In terms of the rookies, top point getter with 59. Well, remember when we didn't draft Alex Nylander? And we're playing Montreal in round one. The Battle of the Brothers. Alex Nylander at a 90 overall. That is outrageous. And McBride might have a shot at the uh, Calder, by the way. Wow. Back in the playoffs, and it gets to be William versus Alex Nylander. This will be interesting. 